Welcome back to another Mobile Centrics Tips and Tricks. Today I'm going to be showing you a new product. This is the iShun BCO1 battery calibrator. Up until this point, in order to correct the data, we've had to use tag on flexes, programmers, and I've always thought if there was a tool that could recalibrate the battery itself without having to add on a tag on flex or alter the data with a programmer, but to actually alter the data by recalibrating the BMS board itself. Is there a way? And that's what this accomplishes. Let's get into the video. This right here is the iShun BC01 battery calibrator. Let's take it out and take a look at it. It comes with a free month of the JC Drawing software. That's pretty cool. Just follow the steps on the back to download and install and activate the, uh, the month free trial. And it comes with a cable. Looks like a standard Type-C USB to Type-C USB. Good quality cable. And it's designed for the iPhone 11 all the way up through the 14 Pro Max. Let's take a look here at the product manual. You can see here that it's designed to raise your battery health to 100% automatically. And here you can pause the video if you'd like to read the actual description. But it basically is designed to help you recalibrate the batteries once you've replaced the actual cell itself. To show you how this works today, I've got an iPhone 11 here that is in need of a new battery. When we go into the battery health, it shows us at 73%. Definitely something we need to uh, service here. Go ahead and turn off the phone and take out the battery. All right, now we've got the battery out. We can go and connect it up and see what it says. And here you can see the battery capacity, the charging state, the current state time, the actual capacity, the full charging capacity, the health, and the cycle counts. All right, so I've got this hooked up to the computer. I've upgraded it, and now we'll connect the battery. And we can see here that it has the cycle count, the battery health percentage. It actually says that it is 76 instead of 73 which is interesting and it shows me the battery percentage at 31 percent well, let's go ahead and refurbish this battery and see what this can do now i have other in-depth videos showing this entire process but it's basically straightforward the first thing that i'm going to do is carefully remove the sticker that is protecting the bms board which is the battery management system I can grab the second sticker and gently pull it out. As I do that, it'll kind of unroll the BMS board and then I can remove that inner sticker as well. Just like that. And then inside here, you'll notice that there are two little hinges basically that hinge away from the BMS board on both of the leads that come out from the battery core itself. I'm gonna carefully hinge those out like so. All right, I've got here a pair of ceramic scissors that come in and carefully cut right there along that seam. And we'll do the same on the other side, like so. Now here I've got a replacement battery for the iPhone 11. I'll slide it out. And here we've got our new core with the leads that come off of it. Now you'll notice there's a difference, quite a difference in length between those ones. The difference plus a little bit of extra that we clipped off of here, I'm going to trim off of the new battery. It ends up being about right there. Right, a little bit more. About an eighth of an inch. This one's a little thicker. It takes a little bit more. your strength and there we go I'm gonna make that a little bit of a straighter cut there we go. 
Now this next part is pretty straightforward. I'm just going to carefully grind off the old tack welds off of the old uh, leads here with this little grinder until it looks more like that. Now I'll do the same to the other side. And a lot of the time you can just grind right through it so that it pulls it off just like that. And I'm just going to smooth out the marks there. Alright, from here I'm just going to get a some type of metal base that's conductive like this, this brass uh, key plate. And I'm going to line up one side. Don't want to, we don't want to cross over the two leads, so I'm leaving one off the conductive surface. And then we'll place over our anode and cathode here, over the leads. And we'll get out our tack welder. Turn it on. Alright, now I'm going to come in with a metal surface that'll conduct for this part of the repair. And I'm going to put it so that one of the leads isn't touching the metal while the other one is. And the same goes for when I actually touch the batteries. I don't want to have them crossing with any of the metal surfaces. I'm going to take one of the leads and compress it into the metal just where I want it. And then we'll take the other lead and we'll touch it to the metal. I, think I need to increase the power output there like that and I'm going to do it in several other spots and I'll go across it several times until I have uh, uh, maybe basically four decent joints and now we'll move on to the second one so we'll compress it where we want it like so tack it in place shift over a little bit do it again over again and for a fourth time that way I know I have a, a solid joint there between the two now it's pretty straightforward I can basically bend those hinges back over themselves kind of folding up and pinching the work we just did Now I can peel away the sticker protector there. I'm going to take the old sticker, stick it down inside there, and then we'll roll this guy back up. Like so. I'm going to salvage the old bracket here. right there and we'll get our new sticker line it up fold around the little arms to the back and then wrap everything else up nicely beautiful all right let's go ahead and upgrade the device and we'll start the upgrading go successful and here in the parameters is where you can view all of the settings that you can alter if you'd like adjusting these will definitely decrease the amount of time it takes for the cycles to actually take place all right now we'll come back over and we'll plug in the battery and you can see now we've got battery at four percent and it still has all of the old percentage so here we've got 75 percent all right so it automatically dropped down to zero percent and then started it and then it started a five hour countdown so here they have the recommended just charge standing time at five hours i want to put it at two so i'll go ahead and click the download and i guess we'll come back after the two hours is up all right, so here we're almost down with the countdown to the one minute mark. Let's see what happens when it should switch over. Here we go, zero. All right, so now I've got it uh, with a different cable connected to the power supply. And we've actually got it pulling 1.8 amps. Uh, so this should be actually charging now. I think that just having it connected to the computer wasn't putting out what I needed it to. So yeah, figuring that out as I go, but it looks like we're going to be able to charge the battery now. 
and hopefully we're going to see that percentage um, over the next cycle or so go from 75 up. That's the goal anyway. And after only eight minutes or so, we've gone up 10%. So it's headed in the right direction. Apparently it does, has to go through a full cycle in order to alter the actual battery health. So let's let this go and we'll check back when I have an update. All right, so now we've been charging for about an hour and a half and we are almost at the 100%. Now we're at the 99%. I've let it cycle now for about a day or so, and you can see that it has gone up to 78%, which is interesting. So it is definitely going up. It's going up slower than I would have hoped, but it is going up. Let's check this in the actual phone itself. All right, so we'll disconnect it. <laughs> and we'll plug it into the phone. Turn it on. All right, and let's take a look in the settings and see what's happened with the battery health. It was at 73, I believe, before. It still needs to be serviced because it wasn't above that. It still says 73 here. All right, so I'm gonna try something real quick. I've got another battery that isn't original to this phone installed. I wanna see if I can get that message and then, and then to see if the battery data will then be corrected. It still says 78 there. Let's go see if we get the notification in the, yeah, important notification here, that's good. Can't rec, it doesn't recognize it. Go ahead and turn that off. Disconnect the battery. We'll take the original battery here. Plug it in. And let's see if it goes up in percentage now. And there we go. It has gone up in percentage. It actually says that it's at 79. So this definitely does work to adjust the percentage inside the actual battery BMS board versus using the tag on flex to alter the data. All right, so I'm just gonna let this continue to run for a bit longer. We'll reconnect it. And we'll just let this continue to go and, and get that percentage a bit higher. The really cool thing about this is it's actually changing the data. It's not just basically tricking the data, kind of overwriting the data. The tag on flexes will definitely work to get it to get to 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 alter the data. The only thing is, is programs like 3U Tools can still see past the the tag on flex to see the old data whereas using this product is actually changing the data in the bms board itself without the need of a tag on flex so it's a step in the right direction i wish that this was faster but obviously charging a lithium cell is it isn't something that you can do quickly uh, and discharging it quickly it that would that would damage the cell itself so it has to go through this process of raising the the charge and discharging it over and over again and it and it and it will then fix the data itself pretty cool all right so i've let it go over the weekend and now we're at 99 percent so it's definitely gone up and uh we'll let this go through maybe one more cycle and we'll see where uh, where it gets to with percentage I'm a little impatient, so I'm not gonna wait until it says 100%, but I've got the phone here. We're gonna boot it up with the power supply so that we can flag a, a non-genuine, uh, get the non-genuine message. But you can do this process with just an aftermarket battery or another genuine battery that wasn't the original to the phone. We'll click on battery. There we got the important battery message. 
And we can go ahead and turn off the phone. You see that it, we're still only at 99%, but it's been there for, for a while. And last time when it so showed a percentage, it was actually higher inside the phone. So I'm just gonna try that real quick. We'll disconnect it from here. We'll go ahead and install it inside the phone. Go ahead and turn it on. And we're gonna check in the health settings if it's been fixed. Now, if I had just gone to put it straight onto there, this would have still been at that 79 or wherever I had gotten it to before. I needed to, again, plug it into the power supply or use a battery. So let's go into the settings now and see what happens with the battery health. And there we go, 100%. So yeah, even though that was saying 99, I had a feeling like it was at 100, and now it is back to being 100%. So that is without the uh, tag on flex, swapping over a core uh, to the BMS board with, without the need to have a tag on flex installed. We actually changed the battery data in the uh, in the BMS board itself. So as you've just seen, I was able to get this battery back up to 100% in the health settings of the phone and was able to do that without the need of a tag on flex. The downside being it took longer than I would have hoped. Now it's headed in the right direction. Maybe somebody will figure out how to recalibrate it quicker. There's an algorithm behind being able to actually capture a proper discharge and charge of a battery in order to calculate that battery health percentage. And going over it cycle after cycle after cycle gives it more data to, to project the actual data, the battery health at whatever percentage it is. And now that we've replaced the actual cell, it was able to get up to 100%. I know that it wouldn't have been able to recalibrate it if it was the original battery, it would have stayed at that 73% and it wouldn't have gone all the way up. I had to replace the cell, of course, which you should always do if you're trying to do a battery repair to get to 100%. Pros are it actually works. Cons is it does take time. So if you are buying and selling a lot of phones, this is a good solution for you because you probably have the time to let the battery cycle for a few days before putting it back together versus doing it for a client that might be a little tricky. Now, of course, you can go through the process of installing an aftermarket battery because you have to do that anyway, at least connect an aftermarket battery throughout the process like I've shown and tell them, hey, come back, you know, in a few days, come back in a week and we'll reap one, we'll put back in your battery or whatever you need to do to, to pitch it. Doing it this way without having to use a tag on a flex, in my opinion, is the more professional way because it's actually recalibrating the battery itself and not just kind of tricking the software into fixing the data. So hopefully you found this video educational or entertaining. Leave a comment below. Is this a tool that you would get? And also leave a comment if there's a tool that you would like to see me demo in a future video. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video.